put a finger down if you've ever been out and about, felt a little thirsty, so you grab a plastic water bottle at the store to quench your thirst. Then you toss it in a recycling bin like a responsible adult. When you recycle a plastic bottle, you get a warm, fuzzy feeling. The mental narrative goes a little something like this. I know plastic is bad, it's clogging the oceans and hurting cute sea creatures, but at least I recycled. I'm a good person and I care about the earth. This idea has been drilled into all of our heads. From the time we are young, our parents and teachers tell us that if we care about the earth, we should recycle. And if we all just recycle, our trash will be magically transformed into new items in an infinite triangle of reincarnation. It's a good story. Unfortunately, it's a f***ing lie. But here's the twist. It's not actually your fault. The story goes back to the 1950s at a plastics industry conference. The keynote speaker got up on the mic and exclaimed to the attendants, your future is in the garbage. These plastics companies realize that if they can get people to throw away, they will have to buy more stuff. So more and more things were made into single use containers. And as a result, more and more bottles were ending up on the side of the road as litter. Vermont, being the ever progressive state that it is, saw this trash build up on the roadways and passed a single use bottle ban. This really freaked out the bottle companies. They knew they needed to do something quick before the legislation spread across the United States. So they created the Keep America Beautiful campaign. The advertisements featured an iconic Native American with a tear in his eye and the line, people start pollution, people can stop pollution. In a flash of brilliant marketing, the beverage companies shifted the responsibility for the waste that they create from themselves onto us, the consumers. It gets even crazier. The recycling system is not just broken, its mere existence actually spurs us to create more waste than if we were just throwing our trash away. Ah, <sighs> the mythical land of away. That's right, recycling actually increases waste. In 2017, Boston University professors published an interesting study. They designed a clever experiment where they instructed people to wrap gifts. Half of the participants were in a room that had a trash can, and the other half had both a trash can and a recycling bin. It's counterintuitive, but participants in the room with the recycling bin used way more paper than those with only a trash can. Just the passive suggestion of recycling caused an increase in waste. 33% more. This effect is called the moral licensing effect. It's the subconscious phenomenon where choices that boost our self-image allow space for actions that we would otherwise consider unethical. Good acts offset the bad behavior, like the great karmic scale evening things out. Running for an hour, then pounding a cheeseburger? Moral licensing. Taking a 40-minute shower because you have a low-drip faucet? Moral licensing. Traveling more because you buy carbon offsets. Moral licensing. It's how we justify undesirable behaviors after we do something we consider good. The idea here is that if you intend to recycle a plastic bottle, you don't feel bad about grabbing one or five out of the gas station cooler in the first place. But our wastefulness is not our natural state. It's a learned behavior. All of Earth's creatures, including humans, are involved to be as efficient as possible. Ever see an eagle's nest with a four-car garage? No, eagles can't drive. But they're still efficient, and humans used to be too. But the systems we have built are not. And if we mean to survive, we need to fix those systems. We all know plastic is a problem. There are trash islands in the middle of the ocean, plastic is clogging rivers, polluting waters, and contaminating our food and plastic production is only increasing. Remember, plastic has only existed for about 100 years, but half of all of the plastic that ever existed was produced in just the last 15 years. We've created a disposable culture based on convenience, a global system of wastefulness in the blink of an eye. But two years ago, it started to feel like we were making progress. In 2018, we all saw the viral video of the sea turtle with a straw lodged up his nose. That turtle sparked a movement, which was followed by sweeping legislative bans and voluntary corporate participation. Being seen with a plastic straw became taboo. 
celebrities wouldn't dare post a picture with a plastic straw. It was the perfect time to launch the world's first collapsible straw company, and I'd spent the previous four years studying for a master's in sustainability at Harvard while working in the pollution prevention department at Los Alamos National Laboratory. Things were headed in the right direction, if only incrementally. Then 2020 happened. Single-use waste skyrocketed, and we seemingly forgot about the plastics issue. There was a huge surge in food delivery waste as restaurants shifted to takeout only models and people stayed indoors to social distance. Coffee shops stopped taking reusables. Stores wouldn't allow reusable bags. Single use masks became as common as Kleenex. All of a sudden, the plastic narrative that was dominating the headlines fell into the shadows of COVID and a reality TV show about tigers. We've lost a decade of progress in the last nine months. Our plastic waste is only as good as the systems we've devised to handle it. So what are those systems? Well, we used to send all of our recycling to China because the US doesn't have widespread domestic plastic recycling infrastructure. But in 2018, China said, no thanks, and politely declined our waste because it was highly contaminated with non-recyclable material. In the US, we tend to wish cycle throw things in the recycling bin that we wish were recyclable. Moral licensing in full effect here. Coffee cups, not recyclable. Ziploc bags, not recyclable. Plastic straws, not recyclable. With China not accepting our trash and no plastic recycling industry available here, the majority of plastic you put in a recycling bin ends up in a landfill. Of the 9% of plastic that does get recycled, yeah, 91% does not. Less than 1% is recycled more than once. This is called downcycling because the resulting material is much lower quality and has little commercial value. Plastic is not like aluminum, which can be infinitely recycled over and over. Because of the additives and colorants, plastic can only be converted into less valuable products. It's like blending a matcha latte and a shot of mezcal and then trying to separate them again. It doesn't work. As a whole, plastic is not the problem. It's how we use it. Plastic is an amazing material that has allowed for unimaginable scientific, medical, technological advancements. And it lasts forever, which is a blessing and a curse. Plastic never biodegrades. Instead, when exposed to light, plastic breaks down into lots of tiny little pieces that enter our food stream. 90% of sea salt tested in a recent study contain microplastics. So, Next time you're eating sushi, know that with every bite, you're also getting a little sprinkling of microplastics. Hmm, yum. So what's the plastics industry doing about these issues? They went and created the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. Sounds charitable, right? Hmm, not quite. Though the Alliance to End Plastic Waste has committed 1.5 billion to cleanup efforts, they're also spending 204 billion on creating new petrochemical facilities. If your bathtub was overflowing, would you drain it with a teaspoon or turn off the tap? For the most part, we all know we need to do on an individual level, but I'm gonna take the next bit and give a few quick reminders. The first is rethink. Be mindful of your consumption, your relationship with things, and your relationship with the earth. It's all connected. The next is refuse. Only use what you need. Say no to single-use straws, cups, bottles, cutlery, bags, really all of it. When you call and order takeout, ask specifically for no bag and cutlery. This leads right into reduce. Use less. Do a waste audit at your home and take a peek into your trash can and that drawer where you keep all the plastic bags. Look at what you're throwing out. One super easy switch is to replace Ziploc bags and plastic wrap with reusable alternatives. This goes right into number four, which is reuse and repurpose. Buy high quality items that are designed to last. In the long run, I promise it will save you money. When you can, buy used. I stopped buying new clothes a year and a half ago and instead shop at consignment and thrift stores. This entire outfit is used and it's super cute. The next is repair. University of YouTube can show you how. Get down with your inner fixer and please, if your mom and dad didn't teach you, learn how to sew. It's really easy. The next is responsible. Carry your reusables with you. Take responsibility when you leave your bags in the car and just go get them. Train yourself to always have what you need. 
you definitely have a reusable water bottle, probably quite a few, but do you carry a reusable spork with you? Let's be more responsible consumers. Give better gifts. Please, no more of these useless tchotchkes or low quality junk that breaks in a couple days. Let's give sustainable presents that have a purpose and support companies that have a deeper mission and give back. These are big jobs to tackle, but it's possible. By modeling these behaviors on an individual level, we can start to influence the larger systems at play. Here are three ideas for systemic change that would dramatically move the needle. The first is changing government subsidies. The oil industry is subsidized to the tune of $5.3 trillion a year, which makes plastic appear to be artificially cheap around the globe and chokes off research and development for reusables and bio-based alternatives. The next is legislation. 32% of plastic waste ends up as litter. That's kind of like dumping one dump truck of plastic in the ocean every minute. We need to hold companies responsible for the waste that they create. They should pay for the damage they cause. This is called extended producer responsibility. EPR is a policy approach that puts the responsibility, both financial and physical, on the producer to deal with the waste that they create. So not only do they have to collect, sort, recycle, or dispose of the waste, they also have to pay for it. Right now, this financial burden lies on you and me, the taxpayers, to deal with the waste these corporations are generating. Taxpayers cover more than 90% of the cost of recycling, and we are essentially paying twice, once for the bottle and then again for its disposal and cleanup. Meanwhile, the beverage companies don't have to pay a dime for the cleanup. Shifting this model to make producers financially responsible for the waste that they create provides a larger incentive to work towards reducing waste at the source. The third and final point is environmental equality. A healthy environment should be a basic human right. 2020 opened my eyes to the idea of intersectional environmentalism. Intersectional environmentalism is where social justice and sustainability meet. It's an inclusive type of environmentalism that advocates for both the protection of the people and the planet. And it amplifies the discussion around how race and culture impact who experiences environmental injustice. Low income communities are statistically more likely to be impacted by toxic waste, landfills, food deserts, and have limited access to green space. Saving our earth is an opportunity to unite the division between people. It's the one thing we should all agree on. Regardless of your political, spiritual, or social beliefs, Earth is the only planet we have. Like, there are others, but unless you're Elon Musk and have a spaceship, you're not gonna end up there. So we should probably start treating it that way and not burn down our own house. The choices we make as individuals change the people around us and the surrounding systems. We need to stop taking half measures. Moral licensing is allowing us as a society and even as a planet to believe that the teaspoon can keep up with the tap. I know times are a little scary right now and it may seem like these small individual changes are pointless given the scale of the existing devastation, but your voice is more important now than ever. Many of you are already taking some steps to change your habits, but we need to take the final step together and vote on these issues. We have to change our individual actions as well as policy. So please vote. Will saying no to a plastic straw save the world? No, but it creates a ripple effect and the social impact that collectively adds up to values and social norms. Remember when it felt weird to wear a mask in the supermarket back in March? Now it feels weird to shop without one. Social normalization leads to systemic change. Waste is just a design flaw. The good deed of recycling is an illusion and our systems for managing waste are in need of major reboot. But we can do this. Our voices matter. Companies are literally listening to you and what you want. If you stop using trashy products, they'll stop making them. So speak up, spread the ripple, educate your community, and for fork's sake, Use less plastic.